Uh, do you plan on driving to your Turkey Day destination? Well, uh, you might want to rethink the way you get your directions. Our cybersecurity expert, Dave Hatter, says there's some things that you probably don't know about Google Maps. And uh, Dave joins us now to tell us all about that. Say it ain't so, Dave Hatter. It, it is so, John. You know you're constantly being tracked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess that's the real problem is what you, the, the kinds of permissions you have to give Google that may not have anything to do with getting directions. Well, that's exactly right, John. And that's pretty much the case. You know, most of these phone apps follow the surveillance capitalism model. You're the product, not the customer, right? You're using all these great services and many of them really truly are great services. I mean, who has to try to remember where they're going anymore, right? If you have the location uh, turned on on your phone, you fire up a map, it takes you right where you want to go. I mean, it is pretty awesome, but I think it's important to understand the potential trade-off you're making with that data. And for folks who are using an Android phone and Google Maps, if you haven't seen the location history they keep on you, it, it is often quite shocking to people once they actually see what's out there. So they keep try they actually uh, store this? They store uh, where you go and how you get there and that sort of thing? They do. If you have the location services turned on on your phone, it's pretty much tracking you all the time, whether you're using the map or not. Now, of course, you know, they claim they're using this to improve all kinds of things. Like it might, it'll tell you if you have it long, long enough, you know, you should leave now if you want to be home at five. And Apple can do some similar things. But generally speaking, Apple is a lot more privacy friendly. Uh, with Google Maps, it's, it's quite astounding how much data they're tracking about you. And you can go into Google. If you log into your Google account, and I, I sent you guys some links, maybe you can put them up there. You can log in and you can actually see and it will build a very detailed map of everywhere you've been. Again, it, it's quite shocking to most people when they see how much data has been collected over time. Now, and, and once they have this data, it's theirs to do with as they will, right? Uh, pretty much. I mean, you can go in and delete it so that someone else couldn't see it because obviously anyone that would have access to your Google account could see that. Um, you know, Google has a policy where if law enforcement asks for that information, they'll share it. Uh, you know, if you're being divorced, could it be subpoenaed and used against you somehow, potentially? So again, I, I'm not saying it's necessarily nefarious, John. I just think most people probably don't realize that this is happening. And if you haven't seen it, I really can't encourage you strongly enough to go in and see how you can tell everywhere you've been for potentially years with the amount of data that's being tracked. It's, it's quite shocking. Yeah, is there any way to disable it? And if so, is there any downside to yeah. that? Well, there is. If you turn it off, you know, Google, like Facebook and other, other sites that basically make all their money from you via data, use what's known in the industry as dark patterns. Like they'll tell you, well, if you turn this off, you know, you won't, your directions won't be as good. We won't be able to predict like when you should leave to be somewhere. And that's okay, right? That's the trade-off that you're making. If you turn off the location uh, services of your phone, like I have an Apple phone, I turn off location tracking unless I need to use the maps in my phone because while your cellular carrier always knows where you are, that's how the networks work, there's really no reason that Apple needs to know where I am every second of the day, right? If I want to use the map, I turn it on. That's kind of inconvenient, but, you know, I'm the tinfoil hack guy, John. We oh, all yeah. know this. So, <laughs> yeah. so you can turn that off. And, you know, there are, there are alternatives to Google Maps. Google also owns Waze, so they're getting all your data there, too. You could use something like Maps.me or Here We Go or OMS and. These have Android versions as well as Apple versions if you don't want to use Apple Maps. If you're on an Apple phone, just use the Apple Maps capability. And you know, there are web-based uh, maps as well. They don't typically work as good. Like you're not gonna get the turn-by-turn -turn directions you might get with Google Maps. Uh, but I just I think it's important for people to understand how much is being tracked. And I encourage folks, if you're an Android user, go out, log into your Google account, see it for yourself, and then see if you're comfortable with that and possibly look at one of these alternatives. Yep. Uh, you know, if you, if you know, then at least you, you know. <laughs> That's what right. And, and you can at least make a conscious choice, right? If, if you decide that the convenience and the, the power of these tools provide work for you and you're willing to give up all that data, hey, great. But you should at least know. Yeah, absolutely. Dave Hatter, as usual, thank you so much uh, for giving My us a pleasure, little insight John. into uh, what's happening in our uh, cyber world. It is uh, nine. Thanks.